Welcome back to Investment 360. Centaur Asset Management has opened a new fund in July this year. That's called the Centaur Balance Fund. Now, the fund is based on balance accounts which have achieved 24% per annum compound returns since inception. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the uh, Centaur Met a Flexible Fund with Roger Williams. He's the MD of Centaur Asset Management, joining us now in studio. Thanks for joining us today. So, so let's just to touch on those uh, points that were made uh, earlier there because they were made about the United States now being an, an empire essentially that's in decline. I mean, that's a very bold statement, I'm sure one that many Americans would argue against right now. I mean, your thoughts on where the United States economy is right now and how that is affecting market behavior. So I think the, the US market simplistically is in a bull market. And, and if you look historically, it goes through bulls and bear markets and, and people are very optimistic. And the momentum's massive there. I think, you know, calling the demise of the U.S. now, you know, the, the, say the empire's maximum on, only 200 years old. I think it could be a bit premature. I was there last week, and it's hell of a dynamic, the U.S., mm -hmm. and you can see why it's successful. I mean, everyone's entrepreneurial. Everyone works hard. It's got a youthful culture. I, th I think it's still got lots of legs, the U.S. Certainly risk takers in the United States. I mean, that's also been my experience. You know, everyone is starting some kind of business or has aspirations to start their own business on the side. Um, and that, of course, is what creates that dynam dynamism in yeah, an economy. Um, offshore equity in, in the Met a Flexible Fund right now. Are you exposed to the U.S. markets through that? I think you've got a 9.1% holding there. I, do, I have offshore exposure. I don't really have major U.S. exposure. Um, my biggest, one of my more successful holdings has been Vodafone. That's actually up 10% today. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking to sell their Verizon Wireless stake, so that's a US stake. I think that's worth enormous value, Verizon Wireless. They own 45% there. Um, on my offshore exposure, I've got about 14% in the fund. Um, I would have liked to have more, but my fund's grown very, last, uh, very fast over the last 18 months, and I've been reluctant to, to take money offshore on, on such rand weakness. Rand at 1040 does look a bit oversold in my opinion. I think a fair value is closer to about 840. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bit of a, you know, it's quite far from fair value. Um, and the risk matrix, I, I think it could recover a bit. So you'd like to invest more money offshore with the Rand ultimately prohibiting you from making that move right now and, and upping the allocation? Yeah, I think strategically I would have liked to, but tactically you try you try move money um, on rand strength. Yeah, you know, that's how you make money, and and you know this year there hasn't been much rand strength. You're sitting with quite a bit of cash uh, in your fund, the the Met Flexible Fund, 13.7 percent, so essentially 14 percent. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to that cash, why are, why do you have such a large cash pile right now? What are you planning on doing with it? I think um, the cash pile is slightly larger th than I'd want. I've also got inflation linked bonds. My total cash holding at the moment, um, including offshore cash, is 24%. That's mm -hmm. including inflation-linked bonds. Um, what I've been doing, I've actually been selling shares, which I, I think are fully valued. And I've been finding it very difficult to replace, replace those shares with better value. Um, but, you know, I think I'd, I'd like to up the equity content, ideally, another 5 to 10%. Mm -hmm. So you've been selling shares that uh, have been uh, kind of run quite hard and you yeah. see a time to take profits. Which shares are those? Um, I reduced uh, retail s exposure earlier this year. Mm -hmm. The reason why I had hell of a run some from some of these retail stocks, I think you know the risks on the upside for interest rates. That's the, that's the primary determinant, um, and I think that's been a reasonable decision. I think it's actually worked for me. Um, and and then some smaller stocks, um, I've just I've just paired. Mm -hmm. So how do you uh, position yourself then in light of a, a Woolies, for example, that came yeah. out with certainly stellar results today? The stock is up on the back of that. Uh, full year profits 27.3% up. I mean, Woolies is certainly a standout in the retail space. So do you have exposure? Do you want to up exposure there? What are your thoughts on that? Um, Woolies is actually one I lightened. I, th I think, you know, Woolies is an exceptional long-term stock. I mean, the growth profile over the last 15 years has been exceptional. Um, but having said that, it's been very cyclical. You know, mm -hmm. if you look um, in 2007 at 25 rand and, and, and it, it troughed at 9 rand. So, you know, if interest rates go up, I think Woolies is going to be under pressure, notwithstanding a, a very, very strong business. Um, but these results were, were really exceptional and management is investing a lot of money into, into the future. And I think that's going to pay great dividends. And also, it's a lot more balanced. The, the, the Australian subsidiary is about 18% of the attributable profits, mm -hmm. and that's been in, you know, they've uh, they acquired something last year which has been exceptional. So, 
I'm, well, a, I'm more positive post the results. Mm -hmm. I think they, they exceeded my expectations. Yeah, it seems that they exceeded everyone's expectations today. So what's going to be the kicker uh, for Willie's earnings going forward? Is it going to be more of the same when it comes to management, buying up franchises, looking to exp you know, expose themselves more and more to Africa? Or is there a kicker when it comes to strategic plans right now that you see as having a major boost to earnings? Maybe not in the short term. Um, you know, next year Australia is going to be the, the primary kicker uh, due to a weaker currency and, and there's still benefits from this acquisition to come through. Um, management think they ca can get further margin enhancement. I mean, margins are already at record levels, but they, they see further potential there. They're also expanding into sub-Saharan Africa. Um, there may be an, an acquisition of the Botswana territory, which could also give a bit of a kicker. And management are expanding um, their stores. So their food stores, they, they're looking to take existing stores and making them bigger. Mm -hmm. But the way the business is structured, it's, it's very quite easy to expand because they've got the back end so set up that, that, that it's actually quite an easy process. Right. So you've launched a new fund in South Africa, the Balance yes. Fund. Um, who are you competing with? I mean, how is it positioned relative to other balance funds or other options in the market right now? Uh, are you planning on doing anything different with this fund than what you have done with other f uh, balance funds you've managed? Um, it's going to be managed on a very similar basis to my, my other balance segregated portfolios. I've been managing th those for almost 13 years and they've achieved 20 percent compound returns for 13 years. Um, it's, a, it's a classic balance fund, much like the Coronation Balanced, Alan Gray Balanced. It's a very, very big market and it's really catering for, for re retired people who need an income, more of a moderate risk profile. I think where I'm going to be more aggressive is on asset allocation. What I find if, is interest rates go up, it's quite negative for our market mm -hmm. and one must reduce equity content quite dramatically under those circumstances and um, that's one, one area I can get a lot, a lot of value, I think. Mm -hmm. So you're going in and positioning all the portfolios that you manage right now in light of the interest rate environment where we are expecting rates yeah. to go up and of course that, as you say, negative correlation with the market. Yeah, listen, I mean interest rates haven't started to go up. I think uh, the Reserve Bank, you know, ideally wouldn't raise interest rates. They may have to if inflation gets out of control. Mm -hmm. but, but the inflection point on interest rates is about one and a half percent. So if interest rates went up 1%, I think it would be transient and, and one doesn't change one's um, asset allocation dramatically because it may just be a transient move. I think if, if interest rates go up 5%, that, that's really very, very negative. But mm -hmm. I, I don't foresee that happening. So actually, I haven't changed my asset allocation profile dramatically. But you are keeping it in the back of your mind. Thanks yeah, for listen. joining. Yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. have to leave it at that. Thanks for joining us today. Roger Williams, Managing Director of Centaur Asset Management. That's it for Investments 360 this evening. If you'd like to send us some feedback, you can also suggest uh, some uh, guests for our show. Contact Warren directly on at Warren underscore Dick. 